Hi, I have an unusual theory about the healthy world, or maybe it's very usual, but in an unusual form. So I decided to tell you a few words about my thinking ability. So I have been raised in an academical home where both parents were scientists, and I learned the scientific method at an early childhood. And all my family life in my childhood home was intellectual, kind of academical, scientific, with no philosophy, but some kind of world view building elements, though. And all the children in the environment were also very rationally oriented. So I learned to discuss my views and compare my own opinions to those of others very objectively. And then the school years didn't add so much to my thinking ability, but then in the university I studied theoretical physics and mathematics, and that increased my math skills and my understanding about what kind of, kind of building parts or or kind of exercises the mathematical thinking ability of humans is based on and that seems to be very much the same as what insects do. They move in a landscape consisting of different kinds of natural objects which have complex forms and they may move things in it. Like ants, for example, they carry things and build nests. And so the sense of sight is, is very important in mathematics, but in this way, the, even the most human-like, most technologicized, most schooled ways of thinking of humans seem to be grounded very clearly on the natural life in the nature. So I was able to kind of widen my old view that human functioning is based on health to include also mathematics and engineering kind of work which is very important in the modern world. But otherwise I'm very good at building new theories put in putting to objective form all kinds of things that I have met. Uh, also emotional truths, all kinds of sensations like intuition and such. And typically that goes via the concept of health. That is most easy way because feelings guide us toward the greatest health. That's what the theory of evolution says at the level that I consider should be understandable to the our average school kid, to the average academical person at least. And, well, otherwise I'm very interested in large interconnected systems like pictures of the world and the society and any kind of natural phenomena, like the nature landscape is very complex and, and full of structures. So I compare the other kind of structures that are based on knowledge to nature landscape, so there's never the problem that anything would be too complex for me, because, because when I can watch a nature landscape, I can similarly watch my thoughts, so nothing in science has ever been too complex, and kind of when I studied Western philosophy, it too kind of formed some kind of landscapes the, of different views that I, I was able to place on top of each other in some relationship. And so I think also my understanding of philosophy is quite organized in the scientific way. One just needs to remark which, which things one is talking about, or what is the level of understanding in use. So one gets those different viewpoints to the same picture. Otherwise also I'm good at using very many different viewpoints at the same time because 
I'd use one single holistic view of the world and every time that I use some viewpoint it is like lo looking at that single view of the world from some certain angle and that of course is just one view to the complex view of the whole world but but thus we are using different angles I can see the viewpoints of different persons like also one can do if one lifts with one's eyes certain colors or set up forms to front and forgets the others so that's how the human perception ability naturally works because we have these different senses that lift the different sides of reality to the front and then we have atmospheres which is our most natural way of making perceptions the best for thinking and what it must be backed up by the sense of sight because otherwise one cannot get it to a very objective holistic detailed organized structured view picture of the thing in question but otherwise there are the sense of duty and social matters and sports and whatever there is in human life so all these different sides are natural areas of concentration of different people that that typically characterize people with different skills they are kind of concentrated to the things that they uh, enjoy the most or are most capable of in so so one can understand a lot about human characters and human abilities by understanding which perspectives each person use and how those perspectives describe certain sides of the reality but not the whole world and then of course by placing many people in the, into the same picture for example by grouping them by similar grounds and similar level of understanding in concerning those grounds so one can see how this rationality in their actions and how they together build a society at their path and how the other kinds of understanding of others adds to their own wisdom so one can see the whole society in one picture like one naturally knows about one's social context who likes which kind of music or wears a certain type of clothes or whatever you know about them you typically group people by having having a certain kind of profession or whatever major characteristic they have so this is very natural and very effective way right, to think of course by classifying one by one characteristic you cannot know the whole whole person or the whole landscape of different persons you have to take make many landscapes of different kind types of characteristics and only after that you can see it. It is like having a multi-dimensional big qualities or how, how do you say in one single picture it goes like like having a picture of a many-handed person or whatever a person who can do many kinds of things it's kind of thing symbolized by one hand could be a typical example of how you could see it but or different colors signaling different things is even more simple okay so my understanding is very much scientific and holistic thank you bye